hi guys welcome back to my channel in case you're new here you're welcome this is let us talk with cmj and on this channel we talk about faith family lifestyle relationship mozambic and lots more and um, to all my returning viewers and subscribers thank you guys so much you already know how i feel about you you guys are the real mvps thank you for supporting me thank you for making this channel to grow with your engagement the likes the comments the shares and of course the subscribes thank you so much it means a lot to me and if you haven't subscribed to my channel what are you waiting for please do so thank you okay so as you can see i have with me my husband and his name is marcus and our son <laughs> his name is marcus joseph but we call thank you MJ. thank you and um we'll be doing this topic with us why must men pray and um, this topic is because I, I i decided to come up with this topic because i know that there are many people that are struggling with their prayer lives there are many people that are finding it difficult to pray and especially if you grew up in that religious setting prayer is something like a pressure mount on, on that that has been mounted upon us that oh it's necessary for you to pray as a believer you must ensure that you pray as a believer so like i was saying uh prayer is like something that they just told us as a believer it's important for you to pray you must pray and all of that but then why should we pray why must we pray a lot of people don't understand this and if you understand the reason for prayer i think it will help a lot of people to pray better and do better in their prayer life and that is why i'm having my husband discuss this with us that's why i'm having you you know do this with us so without further ado let's just jump right into it so why must men pray hmm. i really like this this um, topic because it's one of the um, foundational things that every believer should know why must men pray hmm. why must we pray you know i have four points here that i'll quickly run us through first one i have is to build intimacy with the father i grew up with this understanding that god is a mystery that you cannot know they use this word at you too and all of those things to you know qualify God and all of that. But um growing up and of course understanding more um from scriptures, I know that God actually wants to be known. Mm. He wants to be understood. Mm. He wants that relationship between himself and his sons. Mm. So much that he sent his son to come and die mm. so that he can bring us from the kingdom of darkness into the into his kingdom. And of course, he paid that sacrifice so that we can get to know him. So as a believer, it is much prayer is much more than asking for natural things from God. Mm. It is more than asking for bread, more than asking for clothing and all of that. Prayer is firstly to understand God, mm. to know God, to have that communion with God. Wow. And so that is one primary thing that is in the mind of the Father. He wants us to know him. So how we know him is by having communion with him through prayer so the primary thing when it comes to prayer the primary reason why we pray is to know the father it just makes me remember you know how scriptures talked about god coming down in the pool of the day to fellowship yeah, with adam, fellowship with adam. I just imagine god already gave adam everything he needed everything that adam needed was already provided before it was even made mm -hmm. so apparently adam did not need anything mm -hmm. so if god came down to fellowship with him i wonder what the conversation with that yeah, like, I wonder yeah. what they would have talked about. Maybe mm -hmm. God was telling him what the world was before he formed him, mm -hmm. or you know, but then I, I so that intimacy, I guess it, yeah. So, All right, so the <laughs> second reason, of course, this actually explains or buttresses the first reason it is to know the mind of the father. Like I said, once we get to have communion with the father, then we start knowing his will, mm -hmm. and like we know what is in the heart of the father is that. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And how is his will done? It is done by men. Mm. So if his will will be done by men, then men need to come to an understanding of that will. And how is that will understood by, by prayer? Prayers. So we come to a place of prayer. Mm. Then we receive the burden of the Lord, the will of the Father. Then in that place of prayer, to receive strength to do that will. So one mm. of the reasons we'll pray is to actually be able to make the will of course the will of the father to be done on earth the disciples asked jesus christ to teach them how to pray mm. and one of the first things that he said our father who has in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. That is Jesus teaching the disciples how to pray. So before he even talked about give us this day, the mm. first thing that came was come on, come on. his kingdom right. being done, his will right. being done on earth, his right. kingdom coming, then right. his will being done on earth as it is in heaven. So from that order, we will see that it is very, very important that we have a relationship with the Father, understand the Father, then know his will and receive strength to do his will. Mm. Now the third point I have here, to build stature in the spirit. Mm. To build stature in the spirit. And of course, we have Jude 20. Build building up, your, building up yourself, yourself in the most holy faith, faith praying, praying in the, the Holy spirit. Ghost. You know, the word build up there is the same word that means to build up a house. Okay. So you are building stature in the spirit. For example, there are some situations <laughs> that we you can pray about mm. based on a level of understanding or stature. But once a stature is being built, it will get to a point that you, will not, you might not even need to pray about those things again. Those mm. things just fall off because mm. of your stature, mm. because of your growth. So one of the reasons mm. why we pray and we pray long, even when you don't even have anything to ask, even if the Father has done everything, why we continue to pray is because we build stature. Two thousand just understand that if you fall in the day of adversity, it means strength. that your strength is little. So one of the reasons why we pray is we pray to build strength. Yes, and I think to, to just buttress that point of building stature, I think if you look at the life of Jesus, how that, you know, before he went to die for us, yeah. he, he prayed for 40 mm -hmm. days and 40 nights, mm -hmm. and then, in fact, temptation now even, oh, that's a perfect example. After he had prayed for 40 yeah. days and 40 nights, so he had then built it, stature. Yes. <laughs> Then, then temptation, temptation came, so he was, came able, was able to, to overcome. overcome because he had, yeah, he had prayed. prayed 40 days and 40 nights. Alright, so the last point that I have here is to address situations. One of the reasons I will pray is to be able to address situations. Of course, in prayers, you have supplications and in prayer, you address situations, you command things and in a prayer that is to address situations, you don't ask God to come and address that situation. Because God has given you authority as a believer. So you address that situation. Hmm. That's one of the reasons why we pray. We pray to address situations. When you see some things also, when you notice some patterns also, things that are not palatable, you address them in the place of prayer. That's one of the reasons why we pray. You legislate. So I think an, an example of, you know, addressing situations would be, you know, Jesus is our author and finish our face and is a perfect example. So another place that Jesus addressed was you know when he was in the boat with the disciples mm -hmm. and the storm came yeah jesus addressed actually he addressed the wind jesus spoke to the wind because that was the root of the storm so jesus did not come out and say my father in heaven yeah he prayed to that situation yeah. and i think that's really profound so i want to ask about the praying for intimacy to build an intimacy with god to understand god better how do you pray that kind of prayer? Because I'm asking because a lot of times when people pray, we just pray and then we go. We don't master the place of waiting to receive back what you know the spirit is communicating to us. So I believe that there is a place of stillness in the place of prayer. Yeah. Such that you are done praying and then you are just there. And then you are quiet and then you are yeah. you know and then you are just receiving. Yeah. And somebody see you just wondering what is yeah. I'm praying because yeah. I'm 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 the one quiet and yeah. God is speaking. Yeah. Okay, so how do you pray prayer of intimacy? All right. How you actually pray a prayer of intimacy is you come without a prayer point. Mm. So you don't come with a list of prayer points. If you, you want, if you to, want build to build intimacy with the Father, you don't come with your own needs first. You just come, you know, without prayer points. Just to love upon Him. Just to love upon Him, you I know. I think and worship will do it. Yeah, you can just uh, play maybe a worship song, and you're just there, just praying in the Spirit. There is a place of our hearts when we are praying. This is very, very important. When we are praying, your heart. Of course, when you are praying in the spirit, most most especially and most importantly, when you are praying in the spirit, your heart is fixated on what you are praying about. So, for example, intimacy with the Father, your heart is fixated on Father. I want to know you more. When you are praying in the spirit, mm. I want to know you more. When you are praying in the spirit. 
that's what is going on in your heart and i just pray i want to know you more oh, i want I just to know you more you, i just love you lord i just, I just want, want to love, love you more. something like that yeah <laughs> how do you judge the effectiveness of your prayer life like how long you stay in the place of prayer the length of it how was the length that 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 proves that your prayer life is effective okay i think what proves that your prayer life is, is effective is of course how long proves also but most importantly is the consistency of your prayer not really how long if because you can pray to ever ask today and you don't pray tomorrow you don't pray next tomorrow you come next week pray another twelve hours you, you, you can't you can't tell me you are you are you are actually doing better than someone that prays 30 minutes every day and is consistent with it so to judge your prayer weight or prayer water is the fact that you do it consistently every day so if it is 30 minutes that you are starting with of course for someone that is just starting out not someone that has claimed that he has grown if it's 30 minutes that they are starting with the most important thing is that you are consistent with it I think another way to judge the success of your prayer life is how not just um, consistent your prayer is, but also how effective. And I think before you can attain effectiveness, it has to do with time. If I'm to pray, because the mind, the way the mind of a man works, our mind is filled up with a lot of things that we can't in five minutes ascend. Before you can even ascend, if you can ascend in five minutes, it means that it, it, it must have taken years of consistent practice so that you close your eyes as you begin to pray. You have already ascended. But the average believer cannot ascend without a very reasonable amount of time. So I feel like another... So to, to, to actually judge your success or to judge your prayer life, the success of your prayer life, you have to actually build that time. You can't just rush into prayer and say, just because I have to pray, just because I have to at least pray every day. So let me just do five minutes, then I'm out. Did you pray today? Ah, of course I prayed. No. Course, so course. it's about starring. So you have of to course, starry. You course. have to spend time. Because the, the longer time you spend, the more your mind gets tuned in to that atmosphere you are trying to build or create. So I think that with that, at least an hour is okay for a believer to start with one hour every day with god we have 24 hours yeah. giving just one hour to god yeah. so if your mind might have traveled for five ten minutes in fact maybe 15 minutes of the one hour Even your mind was minutes, traveling yeah. traveling <laughs> traveling so you know that at least you have the remaining time yeah. now you have but if you if you really want to attain that stature like you've talked about getting to know the will of god you know, spending time with the Father and also building that intimacy with Him. You can't take away the place of time yeah. and spending yeah, enough spending time. Enough time. Yeah. So you have to actually spend enough yeah, time very in place important. of prayer. Very important. Very, very important. Yeah. So I think that's that about that. I think that's all the question I really want us, I mean, that's what I really want us to talk about. So in a nutshell, in conclusion, prayer is very important. Yeah. Every man must pray. Yep. Um, the part of you talking about um um, addressing situations, you know, there's a scripture that says that for the weapons of our warfare are not canal, mm -hmm. but mighty in God for it the pulling, pulling down, down of strongholds. strongholds. So yeah. there are strongholds, there are principalities and powers and rulers of darkness in high places. There are wickedness in this world, and it is only with prayer that we can triumph. Yeah. Yeah. It's only with prayer that we can, you know, um, um, overcome those principalities and powers. Yeah. Jesus prayed and tarried such that when the devil came the devil had no power over yeah. him because he yeah. had prayed you know fervently and earnestly so i think that's also very important there are the world is wicked yeah the world is full yeah. of atrocities and wickedness so we can only survive it by prayers yeah. and yeah. those that are not believers trust me they have something backing them up yeah so is it that yeah. god or something else and if you yeah. believe and you know that there is nothing else than god so if you are not praying, you are actually vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. If you are not praying, you are vulnerable to wickedness of people. You are vulnerable to many attacks. You are vulnerable to arrows. Yes, if you are not praying. I know that you are a believer and in God, you are secure. Our lives are hidden in Christ. As scripture says, in Christ, we are covered. But there is a place of 
betting forth into realities yeah. our promises in God through the place of prayers. Yeah. So we know the things that we have inherit that we have as inheritance in God. So those things are available in the spirit already, like you mentioned earlier. But then we can't see them manifest until we birth them we forth birth into them this forth realm. In and the way you birth them forth yeah. is by praying. Yeah. So yeah. you have to ensure that you pray in order to actually overcome principalities. It is not enough by saying that i know who i am mm -hmm. <laughs> you know who you are but if you are not doing the responsibilities of who you are yeah ah, you yeah. will suffer yeah. you will suffer and the devil will turn you to tennis yeah. ball so i think it's also in fact that that alone should spoil you to pray yeah. not give you fear but no yeah. you should drive into place of prayer yeah. that no i have a victory that i have to bring forth yeah. into this realm yeah. and it is by by praying so i think that that's yeah so to just buttress all that we've said all this while prayer is not until you have prayer points no it's not until you have prayer or you come with a lot of prayer points of course you do that too if the primary reason why you pray is for god then when you get out of the country he will not change you he will not change your prayer life you still have that prayer life because you were not praying for things in the first place that's profound. So thank you so much. And thank you. Uh, we are bringing many more your way just mm. to ensure that we are growing together, just to ensure that you're encouraged in your faith, in your faith walk with God. So thank you for joining me. If you watch the video to the end, thank you so much. Please drop your comments and also subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> so take care of yourself, guys. And till we meet again, same channel next time. Stay blessed and be happy. Bye. Bye.